Musically, from about 85, I started um, just, you know, being into the music from a young age. Uh, from when I was about 17, uh, partly through my brother, who was older and stuff, was listening to reggae from the early 70s and things like that. And then, um, you know, we was into the punk thing in in 76 and had our little phase with that. But then, you know, that was really a two-year thing and and gone. So. Next music was reggae and it just took us, you know what I mean? Nothing can be promised in a time like this, you know? Work out to establish the potential and wish. It's always a bright and shit. That's the consistency of the time that I've been living. Those are those that see the scene. Right, right, don't it's going to be that. The music business is quite low, but to, to tell you the truth, it's been all right for me, you know? I've, I've found that, you know, I've put a lot of effort myself into my studio and trying to up the production quality and stuff like that. And I think a lot of people have noticed that. And a lot of people are coming to me now, so I'm doing a lot of production work for other people. If it's not on my rhythms, it might be mixing their rhythms and stuff like that. That's been good, and that's something that I'm really kind of trying to push more for at the moment. I'm getting older as well, you know what I mean? It's just like, you know, I kind of, in my head, I sometimes imagine, you know, what are people looking at up on the, on a stage, on a dance floor, some 50, near 50 year old geezer, you know, running these tunes, you know what I mean? Might be all right if you see someone like Shaka with his dreadlocks and stuff, but an old white guy, he really wants to see that, you know what I mean? So I kind of, you know, I do wonder about, you know, when the day will come when I kind of figure it's like, I don't really want to be hauling my carcass out to, to do dances anymore, you know? So, so I kind of think, yeah, the studio work is, is what I've got to focus on. trying to learn my, my profession more, you know what I mean? It's like a lot of us um, in the UK scene, from the, from the UK dub scene especially, you know, we're all kind of self-taught, uh, you know, there's no professionalism in, in, in what we do really, you know, we just have a go, you know, but it's, at the same time, it's like, we are, I think you kind of get to, to a point where it's like, you've got to try and push things to get better, you know, you can't keep making a tune that could be made on uh, a beatbox, you know what I mean? It's, it's got to be a bit more than that, surely it should be a, more, a bit more than that. You know, you can't do 20 years of doing a rinky dinky little boom, 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 tune no more, you know? So I'm, my thing is to make effort with the music and uh, really kind of up it will be. Uh, and as far as I can see it, the more music out there, the better, you know? When you have times when it's lean, people forget. People forget and they go and listen to some other music maybe. Because there's more of it around, you know? Poor old Roots Reggae's suffering down below. So yeah, you know, more people put out more music. That's what I think. <laughs> Well, I'm involved with music from an early age. Uh, I was about eight years old when uh, I used to go to with my brother to the record shops. This is in the 60s. Gosh, giving away my age now. And um, it all stemmed from there. From there, I listened to records. I've always had records surrounded me from a very early age. So therefore, after that period, I um, moved to London because I was living in the West Midlands at the time, moved to London and realised I was uh, my cousin had one of the largest sounds in the country at the time, which turned out to be you know, Neville Enchanter. So I used to move around with Neville. I was about 12 years old at this time, which was very unusual, because you know, I was a young man back in the day, 
hitting a big man dance was very unusual, you know what I mean? So I suppose I was fortunate out of a lot of the youths at that time to be even in that position to witness dance all in the early 70s, like 71, 72. And from there I linked up, you know, with Shaka. So, you know, that's how I started off into this, into the sound system world and music. So I was already listening to music before I actually went into sound system. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, started off in, in learning about the technical sides of sound system with Jashaka. You know, this was about from 73, 74 up to 78. I uh, was 15 at the time, 14, 15, just left school or in my exams. But, you know, sound system was a craze at that time and it was, we all wanted to get into it just like how you're wanting to get into it now. So we all wanted to get into it and follow the big sounds and get involved with the big sounds. And I was hungry for the knowledge and technology and everything. So I ended up, a cousin introduced me to Shaka. And, you know, back in the day, it was, you know, if he was there at the beginning of a dance to help lift in the boxes or just to just be there, you'd, you'd get roped in, you know, you'd get pulled in eventually. So eventually that's what happened and I ended up being Shaka for the next six, six, five, six years. Yeah, you graduate, you know, you lift boxes and then you graduate from box lifting to wiring and then you get, you know, it's all to do with experience, you know what I mean? So eventually, you know, some of us would be lucky enough to even play the sound back in the day on select dubs or, you know, Shaka would you know, be ill from time to time, you know, hurt himself or he can't play the sound, so we had to take the sound out. We had a more responsible role with Shaka back then than today. Obviously, he does it, most of it is himself today. He's still got a lot of, he's got help, but he does a lot of it himself today. Whereas back in the day, it wasn't like that. You know, he had the, the men around him that knew and learnt how to string up the sound, how to play it in case he was unable to be there at any off occasion or any off chance, you know. But yeah, graduated from there. From 77, 76 in Gloucester, I sang called Challenger Hi-Fi. And I was about 15, 14 then. And I heard the sound and I said, wow, enough beers. And the bass was heavy then times and the treble. So I said it was loud, you know, because I was only youth then, 15. And I thought, why is this loud, you know? So it's from the 70s, 79, 78, 77, those years, when I was young. And so yeah, that's how I got introduced to a reggae sound system from the 70s, late 70s. The first was in Gloucester in the um, 80s, so the early 80s, the 81, and that is a sound called the Lord Demonstrator. And we used to play everything, roots, um, soul, everything, you know? And, and we changed the name. From, from 1985 to Jack Trinity to call it a more spiritual name. And that's, that's when we start to play Roots on Culture and the dub from 85 onwards.
Well, my first my first experiences of sound system is with the great Sir Castle International, perhaps the greatest sound system that there's ever been. I, I, I left school here. I remember it was me and my bridge in Black Adred who went to school together. And um, our dream while we were in class was always to emulate the great Festus. And Festus was then like a god to anybody who listened to sound system. And um, we wanted to emulate him. I wanted to be the, um, the mic man, which at the time it was a, a bridging called Denzel, who later on became Papa D. But Denzel was the mic man, and Festus was the selector for Sir Coxon back in the 70s. And me and Black Adred, as two youths, you know, we used to go to clubs and things. We always wanted to follow in the footsteps of these two bridgings. I wanted to take Denzel's place as the mic man because I was music was in my blood, and Blacker wanted to replace Festus as the selector for Coxon. So um, it was then, it was in 1974, and we went along to one of the dances in, in Croydon in a club called um, Georgian Club. And um, Lordy Coxon, as like the great man who he was at the time, he used to spot youths and kind of um, see that they had a talent and would kind of give them his sound system to to sort of um, take care of. And that's how the sound would pass down from people to people. And it was Festus and Denzel and them lot at the time, and the next new batch was to come. We didn't know it was gonna be us, but it so happens that Rastafari fixed it that it was Blacker and myself and, and about four other bridgings that actually joined the sound system in 1974-75. And um, Festus became my mentor, and, and from then it started, and we, got into the back of the Sir Coxon truck back in 1975, I think it was our first time, you know, lifting boxes and things. And we stayed in the, in the back of the truck and for about 30 years, you know what I mean? That's how long the journey lasted for us with the sound system. But the whole core of who I am and, and, and how my life is fixed within this old diaspora of music is from, is from Sir Coxon sound system. There was never any box boys in Sir Coxon. Box Boys was for other sound system like Shaka and all these other sound system. You know, we had maintenance crew. That was a great thing about Lloyd Cox and the way he taught us. We, we were the first family of sound, where everybody got a chance to play the sound to be superstars, Sir Coxon. Whereas all the other sounds, they were all individualistic, you know. There was just one man behind them that did everything, string up the sound, play the sound, and represent the sound. Lordy Coxon taught us all to be superstars and to, to, to sort of bring our best out. Anybody could play Coxon sound. All of us played it at any time or another. But then he could see the talent who was actually going to be there, was going to be the long stare. Blacker seems like at the time that he seems like he had the most to be the selector to replace Festus and to move it forward. And I at the time was blessed with this vocal thing that, you know, the microphone was very close to me and Lordy Coxon saw that. So it gave us the opportunity to, to move forward. So this was it. It was a family. It was all about the Sir Coxon family. We all lived together in a house. Lady provided a house for us, and we, it was the first sound system that we lived as a family together. I think it was about nine of us. We started off in Brixton, living in a, in a house in Brixton. And we did everything together. You know, we traveled together. We you know, made fun together. Everything, it was just the Coxon family. When, when I remember Shaka Coxon and uh, Mafia Tone, I think it was, that was a good session. Because that was when, um, I don't know if people remember Fort Augustus by Augustus pa um, Junior Delgado. And um, that had just come out. And we was in the session that was uh, in the Midlands, Northampton area. And the session was going on. Mafia Tone and the sound they couldn't handle it, it burn out already, you know what I mean? And the sound they pack out a long time. And then uh, Coxon, they finished off Shaka the sign off the session. Coxon, they played this brand new Fort Augustus and he just rip up the session, take the session. But Shaka put back on his amps and played Kunta Kinte, brand new, you know what I mean? Boy, that just the place to explore. That's the best session I've ever been to, you know what I mean? Place to erupt, you know what I mean? And from there, he said, you know, Shaka number one. Take it, you know what I mean? You know, in Brixton, we had a funny experience the first time we go there, you know. You know, people talk about baptism. 
Well, it was really a baptism, you know, a water baptism, because literally, you know, we were playing with Jatobis, who's probably, I still read, you know, I don't mind saying it to nobody, Jatobis is still the heaviest sound system, you know. So we're playing with Tobis and Shanti. And it wasn't long, yeah, they hadn't really played together much before that, Tobis and Shanti. So there was like a bit of a bad feeling maybe going on between them, you know. So I just remember, we kind of warmed up early because we had our set up and running early, you know. We warm up and everything nice and sweet. And then suddenly Abba, Abba Shanti start for play, start for warm up his set, did it? And it was like, <laughs> the whole building start for shake. And we were like, whoa, yeah, we're in a, in a dance now, you know. This is different to what we've had before, you know. And so Shanti play a while. We play again after Shanti. Shanti play again. And Tobbies was late coming to the dance. And then suddenly he was there, you know? And boom, 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 they set up the set real quick. And so Shanti kind of looking, seeing him coming in and him cranking up his set to say, yeah, listen, you know, this Abba Shanti out. <laughs> and then suddenly Tobbies come in. Tobbies go, nah. <laughs> this is your Tobbies sound. And he put his bass on Bredrin like, in all the years I've been going to sound system, that bass that night in the wreck just murdered me. I was like, no. And I was just thinking at that moment, we've got the whole night of this to go. You know, an eight hour session, we've got to try and keep up with this. These two, you know, like wild horses. We've got to try and keep up with them. And at that moment, I was thinking that, poof. Water come, and we just get soaking wet. Me and Lyrica Benji standing there, wet. And I suddenly realized what had happened. The roof had cracked, you know, through the heaviness of his bass. What, there's a swimming pool upstairs in the Brixton wreck. Right? It's used every day as a swimming pool. They were doing some work on the swimming pool or something, but it cracked the ceiling, cracked the swimming pool, and water started coming down all over the set. So it was like, one, two, three, shit, water, bum, 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 turn all the amps off real quick, you know, because water was getting into them and everything. So when I say baptism of fire, of water, that was a Brixton wreck, you know. But one of the best dance I remember is going to see Shaka versus Manessa down Mayor Street in Hackney. And it was funny because you had all Manessa crowd, and there was a lot of white people in one corner, and all Shaka cried, there's black people in another corner. And on the night, Manasseh sounded much better than Shaka. He had the better quality, bigger boxes, it sounded good, but he didn't have the vibes. And I remember Shaka playing one tune, and he blasted Manasseh out of the water. And I think it was an Al Campbell tune. It was wicked, dub play. As soon as he put it on, the place went mad. The whole, Aah! and from there, Manasseh was like, finished, wiped out, man, with one tune. You know what I mean? But it was a wicked dance. That's what sticks in my mind all these years, that one. Just seeing Nick's face like that. Like, you know, it's pressure. Big pressure, man. You know, playing against Shaka in Hackney. Not here, because when, when Manasseh first started play, they play, play in places like Muswell Hill, Camden, which is like a more middle class area, more white people. So when you go to the dance in Muswell Hill, it's more white people than black people. But when you have dance in Hackney, it's mostly black people, you see what I mean? So for Manasseh to come to Hackney and play, he's, he's good, he's, courage, he's courageous, you know what I mean? I wouldn't have done it, you know? But he got beat up, man, by the sound system that night, I think. Even though Nick won't say he got beat up, but the crowd went mad, man. Wiped out Nick. The Al Campbell tune, he put it on, I remember it. The whole place went mad. All the lights, psh, psh, brruh, brruh, brruh. He rewinded it about four times. And Manasseh was like, what can he do, man? But it was, that was one of my favourite dances. Well, it would, it would have to be one of Shaka's. Um, it was a dance he did in, um, in Dalston, a place called the Africa House, or the Africa Centre. They had a couple of places up there, or called Africa something. And um, I think the audio clip's on, on my website there. And he, he runs one of my tunes, a tune that I put out in recent years called Oh Jaja. It wasn't called that at the time. I don't know what he called it. I just gave it to him as another dub. 
but he started to run it. I'd heard him play it in a couple of dances and it just kind of done its little thing, you know what I mean? But this one dance here, it was a dance he'd just come back from, from Jamaica and there was a lot of talk about what he would come back with, you know, people that was in, in the sort of circle. You know, yeah, he's been to King Tubby's and he's done this and done that, you know what I mean? It's going to be a wicked dance, got all these tunes and, and what have you. So there was a lot of, there was a lot of good, good vibe in the dance, you know, good kind of feeling, you know what I mean? Really kind of heightened vibe. Been play, he played a selection, you know what I mean? It was all right, kind of usual stuff that he, he, would norm, he was normally playing at that time there. Kind of thought, yeah, when's it going to get going, you know what I mean? Then he, uh, he put on this tune of mine and it just, he just kind of started to make it run, you know what I mean? It was doing his thing and it just caught people, you know? It was one of them kind of tunes that just caught people in that dance. And people was like, yeah, and it's like, you know, it's churning away and stuff like that. Got this flute melody going off and blah, blah, blah. Plays one piece of it and crowd are going, well, yeah. Plays the next piece and crowd are going, and he's charting away on the third piece doing this kind of, you know, his sort of ranking Joe sort of business, you know what I mean? Wicked little little thing there, people were just skanking away. Then he's like, he started, it's, it's hit him in his head to do this Twinkle Brothers thing, the Jahovia thing. Ja he started doing that. Then it hit him in his head. He wants the people to do it. He wants the crowd to do it. So he started going to the mic, I'd like to hear the choir. And he's like playing, he played and he lifted up the knee and said, is the choir here or what? You know what I mean? That was the way he put it. He put the tune back on and started doing his thing. With ja and the whole crowd, the whole crowd, he's got the, vo he's got the bass kind of turned off, the volume of the tune quite, not loud, you know what I mean? Just quiet middle, you know? Not very, not very in your face or nothing. And the whole crowd is going, ja, ah, ja, ooh, yeah. And then he does, oh, ja, ja, like to hear the choir. And the whole choir, oh, ja, ja. And he's just kept this up for this tune. No bass, quiet, quiet rhythm section, but the whole crowd, just all, everybody just going, ja, oh, ja, ja. And doing this combination of this thing, you know? And then at the end of it, he like turns the thing up and it's, crowd are going bonkers, you know what I mean? It's just like, that was a highlight for me personally, that piece there, because I've never seen no vibe like that, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Nowadays, you know, <laughs> it's almost like super sound systems. They're, they are very heavy and very loud. Um, and the question is, are they too loud? because it is supposed to be a joyful noise to the creator. And, you know, when music hits, you should feel no pain. And I've been in dances when people have got their fingers in their ears. So, you know, I remember a brethren, Aqua Levi, saying to me one time, Strider, what, you know, as music lovers, what's the most important things we've got? And that's our ears. And uh, we go into some dances and we're, you know, subjecting ourselves to ridiculous levels of noise. And so I think sound systems need to look at the past to, to, uh, to rem you know, continue how it should, should go. And um, to me, a good sound system is feeling the bass in your chest. Your skull doesn't need to rattle, you know? <laughs> my head's quite all right. I need, I need bass in my chest. And... Um, and tops all level and stuff. So I think uh, sound system operators should uh, should take heed and uh, and run sound system correctly, really. You see, but you know, sound system now is 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 changed. Is that obviously all the new things is coming down and so much power and things like that. You know, years ago we never used to have all these these the power. What what's going around now? But it still used to sound good. You see, so that's that is different as well. You say, man, I have too much power nowadays. You say, I don't, I don't need so much power. <laughs> At the end of the day, the competition, what they, they, they're dealing with, it's not actually music. It's nothing to do with the music. It's the difference to see who can blast each other away. Now, the competition is supposed to be, to me, well, as Kiyopo said, it's, 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 you know what I mean? It's an enjoyment. It's not, um, you know what I mean? It's, music is a mission, not a competition. You understand? And one of the truths is wherever he's ever spoken, you know? But these guys take the concept totally wrong, you know what I mean? And 
the consequences is that we ain't getting nowhere to play. Yeah. You know? It's the quality of the of the sound that counts for me, not just going and hearing every bass line and just saying, okay, I'm come out of the dance and I'm deaf. That's good. You know what I'm saying? I don't want that. I want to come out of the dance and I've still got my hearing intact. But my head is full of these great music that I heard in there and I can remember them because they are the artists that I know or new artists that I don't know but are interested, you know, not just come out deaf and my ring it, ring it in my ears, you know? They need to tone it down, take it down, that people can come out, enjoy themselves, still hear good music and still hear that your sound sounds good. You don't have to blast your sound for it to sound good. You're just deafening people. You got um, the entertainers, right? You got the entertainers who has now the old entertainers who have got offspring, like oh, I've got offspring, like Flip is a new DJ, DJ and he knows it. And they've got new um, artists who has come into it, who are um, giving us their side of things. It was in the blood, but it never really showed up in the blood until mm, after about mm, 1990. At them time, there, I went through full um, service, just like any other man. I used the carry box, run wire string up sound, you know? And it's a learning curve. It's not like one day you string up the box and the next day you string up the wire and then, you know? The, 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 the icing on the cake is to be able to string up the sound, to prepare it for the selector and the, the operator to play. So then I got that level and I used to string up the sound and make, there's other operators them time there. And then I'd start to penetrate the music right through the 90s, you know? Then start taking the sound out myself and, House dances. It's, it's more like a, a, the same cycle. He used to play house dances in Tottenham, block the place until we get banned. You know what I mean? And then we take on the sound. Um, and we're here today, the same thing I go on, you know? Same, same thing. So it's the same cycle we're really going through. So it's like the sound recycle. It's not really a pressure. Still, it's an honour to be able to be in the position. You know what I mean? And hopefully I take, take it and, and bring it on. And hopefully, hopefully someone will come underneath me and I can bring them them along, you know, and, and carry the torch right through, you know, but it's, it's, it's always an honour to work with the big man them in the business, definitely, definitely. Yeah, we're not really, we don't really deal with that bless, you know, to be honest with you. You know, if it, I've always been a firm believer in this, yeah, that if an artist respects your sound or your radio, you know, you as a radio DJ talking about people like Rodigan, that an artist will come to you with a tune that he's made, saying, here Shiloh, or here Meditative, play this tune, this is, you know what I mean, I made this for you out of respect. When it comes to people getting things when money is changing hands just to do something to you, they're not feeling it, they feel, their bank balance is feeling it, you know? No, I'm not, re I'm not supporting that, you know? I'm, I and I don't support that. Yeah. Prepared food, you know, it don't work that way then. You can buy a you can buy a tune in the shop, but the cut which the sound have, you can never buy because that is specially for the sound. That is a special. But if it's like if it's so easy that you can like McDonald's, you can just go in and buy it pre-pack, then it can be special. <laughs> it's an everyday a thing bless. That's true. So it can be a special. So, man, I forget get back to the basis and know what I deal with, what I say, rather than just use words for the sake of words. It's just a thing, it's just bling bling, it's just something to capture people, you know. I have 20 specials, so that make me big. Them kind of runnings, you know. Every tune we play is special, Virgin. Every tune Every which goes up on the deck. Yeah. Every tune which go inside the cassette. Player. Every tune that go into the CD player, every word that is uttered is special bridging. Because it's only for that time. If you hear it another time, it can't be the same. So it's special. Anyone who get the ability to deal with it at that time is special. That is a special. Well, I mean, to, to say changes, changes mostly are just within technology. You know, back in the day it was all vinyl and dub plate and as time goes on 
man start playing dats, mini disc, CDs. That's an advancement within sound. You know, uh, and uh, personally, I like sounds that play the violin and the dub plates. I'm old school, you know, but I also understand that sounds are going to play with the new technology, the CD and the, the mini disc and all these things, you know.